What is an icon? I wasn't really uh, a defender. The term icon has several meanings. It was amazing. Looking on YouTube about <laughs> Ronald Kuma, what he did as a player. Testing, testing, one, two, three. What's happening, boys, and welcome to Icon Swaps 2, an episode that you guys requested. The idea of it I put out on Twitter and in the yesterday's video. Uh, you guys were really looking forward to it, and I thought to myself, you know what? It's Friday. We have the most confusing set of Premier League SBC players I think I've ever seen. Meyer and Foyth, again, both of them are 84 rated in, in arguably the most competitive league in FIFA, one where you need uh, high end players or one where you go to for high-end players, uh, we get ourselves Foyth and Meyer, which are, are two uh, a little bit underwhelming per, uh, selections. I feel like Foyth is probably the guy I'd go for. He's got decent height. He's got nice pace, 88 pace, I think 80 acceleration and some, some decent defending stats. But uh, at this stage in the game and considering how expensive the Premier League SPC is, I think I'm probably going to swerve both of those. And uh, yeah, just felt a little, little bit underwhelmed in terms of selections there. But today, it is all about Icon Swaps number two. You guys have been asking me his way. Who are you going to pick? Are you going to go with two? Or are you going to go with one? Is there a combination of maybe four that you want to go with? Uh, and that is exactly what we'll talk about today. Now, one thing I wanted to ask you guys in this epi, would you like to see players wave you specific to icon swaps number two? For example, there's a couple of guys we're going to talk about. A uh, few guys that I haven't actually used in game. They never pop up in draft for whatever reason, and I just haven't been able to get my hands on them. Uh, usually I just use midfielders to get links, but there's a couple of guys that I'd like to to really feature in a couple episodes for you guys and, and maybe, maybe not make it easier, but give you guys an idea of what a card might feel like before before actually committing to doing uh, doing his icon swaps number two. So, uh, before we go any further, boys, if you guys like the idea of this episode, if you guys like the idea of what I just presented to you, drop a mad lad like on the video. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below. So, we're just going to dive right into it. So, uh, the one thing that people were talking about yesterday was uh, objectives. So, there's uh, six objectives. It lasts for about 14 days, and there's one online component, one offline component. Uh, not too difficult, to be honest with you. The uh, the squad battles ones are fairly simple. You just have to win on Legendary with a team full of Italians. Again, doesn't have to be first owner. None of these have to be first owner in terms of squad battles. And uh, yeah, requires six wins. So there's really no excuse for anyone not to get a win in every one of these. So that's 18 matches. If you do 18 divided by 13, that's something like 1.2 squad battles matches per day. Again, if you bang out maybe four or five in a day, that brings that total down so let's call it you know spend spend the first day doing like four or five of them that turns into one squad battles match a day for the next two weeks that's not in my opinion that's not difficult i know a lot of you guys don't like the offline objectives i'm not a big fan of squad battles but my thing is uh people tell me they'll, they'll watch the streams um they'll watch nep they'll watch someone streaming they'll watch me streaming uh or they'll just pop on like a, a netflix show or maybe a podcast i listen to the rogan podcast when i'm grinding these objectives offline so for me these are pretty easy not too painful to do uh the online ones Okay, so win five rivals matches using 11 English players and you're starting 11. Four must be first owned. If we think about, if you went with that Kent, if you have player of the month Vards, and then if maybe you did the Hamas Milner, um, and I'm trying to think of a couple other, you know, whatever, like maybe you just packed a, a Jordan Henderson or something like that. Winning five rivals matches using 11 players in your squad, four must be first owned. That's not too difficult either. Now, the one thing that I have an issue with is these two, La Liga and Bundesliga. Now, obviously, I do a lot of SBCs Bundesliga heavy on the RTG account, so this isn't too this isn't too difficult for me. I can easily put together a very competitive, I would say an elite level Bundesliga squad, uh, including first owned players. I don't like that it's nine. And I get that it's icon swaps too, so, you know, they're better cards and they have to be, the objectives have to be a little bit more difficult. So I, I understand that. Um, but I don't, I don't know what the alternative would have been. Seven first owned players, I think, is what it was in the Icon Swaps number one. And maybe make keep it seven, but increase the wins. I'm not too upset with this. Again, the, the squad battles matches ones are easy as hell. And then, what is that? That's eight. Uh, eight. And then, so that's 13 wins across 14 days in Rivals, which, again, should not be too difficult. The main thing here, and it's a discussion we can have for a later episode, yeah, is how to make objectives not super super sweaty right because i could come up against someone i'm in division number five i could come up against someone not doing the objectives but then if there was an objective specific game mode uh it would be every game would be rigged everyone coming up against each other would try to rig the system without fail because you'd be connecting to someone that's doing the objectives no no problem so uh if we had to, if we have a dedicated game mode it probably would have to be something along the lines of you have to win uh we'd see a lot more to those objectives because then it'd be a little bit more cutthroat um 
And uh, yeah, so that's another little interesting discussion point. We're gonna go over to squads right now. I'm gonna show you guys who I like and who I don't like, who I think is worth swerving and what combos would be possibly decent to do for icon swaps too. Now again, I'm not the icon guy. You guys know that I don't run a whole lot of icons. Uh, and then icon swaps, you know, I'm gonna play a little contrarian opinion here. Uh, icon SPCs weren't anything really, wasn't something I really grinded to last year. Uh, but now that we have it gameplay oriented, it's kind of like a fun little challenge for me. And the, the thought of just grinding the game. And again, I, it's a, time is money, right? So like the, the, we always talk about it. The time you put into the game is time you could have spent doing something else. But uh, I prefer uh, playing the game and unlocking a card uh, by doing the game. And I wonder if there's a way to appease both sides. With the gameplay guys that like being able to unlock icons that they'd never be able to afford before strictly through gameplay. And then the icon SPC guys. Maybe there's a blend we could do where, you know, maybe some of the mid guys are available through SPCs at this time. And I don't know. The idea is still fresh in my head, but maybe there's something there where we could have icon SPCs and this. I don't know how that would affect the market. I don't know um, how that would be executed, but uh, could be could be an interesting idea. So, for starters, we're going to go with Bobby Moore. And um, I look at his card, and, and a few things are underwhelming, but a few things are actually very, uh, very interesting. So, so plus one over Alessandro Nesta. That's the first thing I thought about because he's got some stats that are similar. High-end defensive stats. I mean, like, there's no quite You can't debate it. High-level defending stats. Every stat outside of heading accuracy is 90+. plus. Really nice agility at 79. Some good dribbling stats. And then the acceleration and the sprint speed is, is what's going to let him down. That's legitimately one of the only stats on the card... That's legitimately one of the only stats on the card that I don't like, and he's only five icon swaps. So he's someone that I was, uh, he's someone that I, I would definitely consider if you're going to go for the cheap route. He's someone that's accessible right now. You could probably get those objectives done, uh, done within the next, you know, if you if you really, really grind it, you could probably get it done within a couple days, and you can get yourselves uh, an 89 icon Bobby Moore. Obviously, you're going to want to use the Anchor Shadow Chem style to get that acceleration and sprint speed, but I wonder um, if uh, I, I wonder if maybe because he has really good 79 agility, decent bounce, really nice reactions in 94, I wonder if he plays faster than that acceleration and sprint speed indicates. So Bobby Moore, for me, is the pick over Frank Rijkaard in terms of the five selections. Frank Rijkaard, again, the, yeah, yeah, there's some nice stats, but I, I, it's just it's a swerve for me. 86. Uh, I've already got Balak on the RTG. I'm going to try and keep this objective, but there's not really a stat that pops out. Like, yeah, there's an 87 rated stat, 88 strength, but outside of that, I feel like you could easily find a midfielder, uh, multiple midfielders that run circles around this Frank Rijkaard for me. So uh, he's going to be at swerve. He's going to be a swerve at number five. Now, Edwin van der Sar, a lot of people are saying VDS. I've already got my keeper for the game, Ter Stegen. I just can't justify using, uh, can't justify do doing icon swaps to get myself a keeper, even though I hear decent things about 89 Vandersar. And for that reason, and because I've already looked at his stats, Fernando Hero is the guy that I would go to for icon swaps number six, uh, requiring six, 75 acceleration, 75 sprint speed. Uh, the defending stats are very nice. Slide tackle is under 80, but again, he's a, he's a chem style away from having really, really nice defending stats. Not too concerned with 78 stamina, not too concerned with 70 agility. Uh, Sergio Ramos has, uh, has just about that. And some of the top end level uh, icons in the game have around 70 agility, so that's fine. Uh, dribbling 65, not too concerned about that. Bounce reactions and ball control could probably jack those off a little bit as well. But uh, Fernando Hero, for a guy that you could get right now, um, and then has stats that I feel like exceed the 86 rating, um, is definitely a guy that I would consider at uh, would is definitely a guy I would consider at submitting six icon swaps. But none of these guys, uh, I can tell you right now, none of these guys are guys that I'm going to be looking forward to, uh, or guys that I'm be grinding towards for my icon swaps number two on the RTG. Now, we move over to a very interesting set. Each one is a different position. Raul, aka Raul, is probably. Uh, is probably one of the guys that I'm strongly considering doing. He requires 10, so you can't get him right now, but in in uh, in 13 days when the new icon swaps come out, you're going to get at least four, so he's going to be unlockable right at that time, and you're going to be getting yourselves an 88 Raul, who has some really, really nuts stats, and I put out a tweet yesterday saying, tell me why he shouldn't be someone that most people consider doing. 86, uh, the dual 86 acceleration, 86 sprint speed, 90 attack positioning, 88 finishing, 84 shot power, you're going to use a chem style to get that shot power jacked off um he's got himself 86 short, short passing which is fine uh, elite level dribbling stats i should add almost everything is plus 90 90 heading accuracy 87 jumping uh jumping he's a chem style away from being a really really interesting card and in my opinion out of the ones that we've looked at already is the most realistic op uh, is is one of the more uh one of the more attractive options especially considering that he is 10 so can't get him done right now can't get him done tomorrow but uh in two weeks time once those new icon collections come out uh, you should be able to get that extra four 
uh, to get him done, no problem. Now, Ronald Coleman is a very, very interesting card. Freaks me out a little bit because of the 68 balance. Um, freaks me out a little bit but because of the 68 balance, but everything else... Oh, and also the work rates. High, medium. Here's my question of the Epi. For those of you guys that have used Ronald Coleman at center back, a lot of people are talking about using him at CDM or possibly as like a Ram or Lamb. Uh, mo most likely would want to use him as a Ram because he's right footed, doesn't have a weak foot. But do the high medium work rates affect him as a center back? Do you find that he comes up a lot? Um, or do you find that he, you're able to use instructions to keep him uh, keep him where you want him? That's that's the main question I have for you. And he's probably one of the guys alongside Raul that I will do a player feature red on uh, for icon swaps too because these are two guys that I'm strongly considering getting done. Again, no rush. We've got two weeks till the next swaps come out. So we don't even have the choice to get them right now. But uh, at 75 sprint acceleration, 78 sprint speed, just a really, really balanced card. Only two stats in the yellow. Balance, again, probably going to do something to jack the dribbling off because he's got 77 there uh, and then 70 agility. Don't have too much of a problem with that as well. So uh, really is a card that you can mold to do pretty much everything. The dual 97 shot power, 92 long shots. Just looks like a pretty nuts card. And again, for 10, seems like pretty decent value. Now, Clarence Sidorf is a guy that someone could make an argument for. We get a four-star, four-star with him. We get a four-star, four-star with Raul. And then also a four-star, four-star with Perez. Uh, and then also Dutch, right? So he gets those links into the Dutchies. I'm probably going to swerve him. I'm not sure how exactly. Just a really, really good... just. Doesn't have any defensive stats, but 86 stamina, 84 strength, nice dribbling stats, nice, I would say really nice passing stats, long shots, acceleration and sprint speed. Um, there's just, I don't know what it is about him that, that's making me swerve him. I think Coleman is a little bit more interesting and Raul, I think, would have a little bit more of an impact. And again, midfielders, I think we've got so many guys in the game right now that would compare to him. Um, I don't know. I feel like I feel like I'd probably swerve. Sort of, this is the most difficult selection set, 100%. Robert Perez, look at this. Imagine him as a striker. Right? Four star, four star, six two, medium, medium, eighty-four stamina. Probably get those dribbling stats jacked off. Eighty-six finishing, eighty-six composure, eighty-eight acceleration, eighty-eight sprint speed, eighty-eight attacking positioning. Um, doesn't really have much in the work in the way of a cam, so you're either gonna use him as a winger or possibly, like I said, as a striking option, because he looks like he could probably get it done uh inside the box. So again, really, this is the tough selection here. The tens are really difficult. Raul and Coleman are two guys that I would probably advise. Th these are probably the guys that I would uh recommend the most out of the uh out of the tens. Again, guys that would be available to you in two weeks' time once the second select uh uh, second selection of icon swap tokens come out so we move on to the 11s there's 11 uh there's three combinations for the 11s and i'm just gonna go ahead and say it socrates is the swerve here for me Socrates is the swerve here for me. Again, it comes down to a lot of midfielders already being in the game. It comes down to the 81 acceleration, 80 sprint speed. I know he's super tall and sort of has this like force field thing around him. He's got nice strength. He's got good stamina. 84 finishing. He's really got incredible long shots. He's got really, really good top end composure. Great passing stats. Uh, but uh, the 56 balance kind of leaves a sour taste in my mouth. And um, I don't know, the acceleration and sprint speed, I would have wanted a different version of Socrates. I, I would have preferred him to cost a little bit more if we got a version that's higher than this. So uh, for that reason, I'm probably going to have to bow out of Socrates. And I know a lot of you guys are like, Sway, how could you? But uh, that's, I look again, I look at the balance and I just, there's just something about this 87 Socrates that for me is, is a little bit of a swerve. I want a little bit more speed. Uh, and then for that reason, I am strongly considering myself uh, Nakata. 87 acceleration, 84 sprint speed, elite level shot power, long shots, 90 composure if you get the right chem style to get those uh, to get that finishing jacked off. He could get stuff done in the box. Uh, passing stats are good, like 93 vision. The dribbling stats are very, very good as well. Not looking for anything for defensing, uh, defensive, and then has the 84 stamina, so not too fussed there. The only thing that I'm curious about is the 31 aggression. I don't know exactly how that would translate into his card, but uh, for me, 4 star, 4 star, 5-9. He looks like he could be like one of the perfect cams if I wanted to switch to that sort of formation. So uh, if I'm considering right now, I'd probably go some combination of Nakata Raul, Nakata Komen. So those are the guys that I'm thinking about in the back of my head right now. Um, and then Gianluca Zambrota. The only reason I'm not doing him, and I'm wearing the Roma kit for this reason specifically, I hope that a Florenzi card comes out along, uh, comes out at some point in the game. I know he won't now because I said it, but... Um, the Z Zambrotta is a guy that I, at first glance, he was like, yes, this is the guy that I'm doing. But, um, why am I not doing this card? Oh yeah, because I've got Mbabu on the RTG. So we're going to be grinding the icon objectives on the RTG account. I've got that 84, uh, I've got that 84 dynamic Mbabu. And in my opinion, he's going to have Zambrotta for dinner. Uh, and he's just going to, he's, he's already just a better card than this. So for that reason, I'm going to have to swap it. But... I would not hate on anyone for doing this Zambrota. Again, for uh, 11 uh, SWAT tokens, for having one of the better right backs in the game that's going to be able to last you a long, long time. And looks like, you know, and, and I always say, you don't need a high-rated player 
um, as a wingback, but he just has some really nice looking stats. 90 stamina, really, really nice strength, really nice aggression, good dribbling stats, elite level acceleration and sprint speed as well, and also has some passing stats to boot. So I wouldn't hate you for going Zambrotta, but for me, if I'm choosing from the 11s, if I didn't already have Mbabu, I would strongly consider Zam uh, Zambrotta, but uh, Nakata is going to be my guy for the 11s. Now, Luis Figo is the lone 13. He's the only one that costs 13. And again, there's nothing, absolutely pretty much nothing wrong with this card. It is a great, great looking card. Four star, four star. Portuguese, so he gets some nice links. Namely, Ronaldo, that foot miss, uh, that foot miss Renato Sanchez, among other cards. 91 acceleration, 89 sprint speed. Really, really nice finishing. Decent uh, shooting stats as well. And then really, really nice uh, passing stats. Almost looks like a really, really good cam, to be honest with you. Or winger, whatever, wherever you want to play him. 90 crossing. Uh, good dribbling stats, 79 bounce, probably gonna uh, probably gonna jack that off a little bit, and then 84 stamina. So 13 at uh, Luis Figo, can't can't hate you for going with him. So Campbell is a guy whose dribbling stats absolutely freak me out. Again, he's a guy that I haven't really used in game, and for that reason, I think I'm probably gonna swerve him. It's quite a hefty ask. It's 14. Um, he gets really, really nice. He's got 6'2", low medium work rate, so nice work rates for uh, for a center back. 77, uh, 77 acceleration, 83 sprint speed. Again, that's not like super wow. We've got guys like Varane and Langley who kind of have uh, have that sort of dynamic. Passing stats, 68 passing is a little bit meh. I'm looking at the dribbling. I see the agility and balance and the ball control, and that really, really freaks me out. The dribbling at 43, I just feel like this guy probably moves like a tank. You can't deny the defensive stats, but then I look at the stamina, 80. Again, I'm not too fussed. My, my threshold is 75 for a, for a center back on stamina, and I'm fine with that. 95 strength and 89 aggression. So for all intents and purposes, this guy is an absolute tank. But for someone I'm so unsure of in terms of the dribbling stats, I'm probably going to have to go ahead and swerve him, considering Hero is a lot cheaper, and I just would feel would feel more confident running a hero, even 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 a Ronald Coleman on those crazy uh, on those crazy work rates. I feel like would be better uh, better suited. But um, again, I can't can't hate you for choosing any of these guys. If someone said it in the chat yesterday. A lot a lot of people are going to go for icon swaps too, based on their favorite club. So if you if if these guys are at your favorite club, you know maybe that's the deciding factor. We have ourselves Gary Lineker. Moving on. Nice balance. Nice stamina, a decent amount of strength, can get him 80 plus with the right chem style. 90 acceleration, 87 sprint speed, 95 finishing, 94 composure, 88 long shots. Uh, sorry, 88 shot power, uh, 86 long shots. And some, and some really, really nice dribbling stats. I feel like Gary Lineker's the elite level one out of the 14. Something about Campbell doesn't really feel elite. Something about Blanc doesn't exactly feel elite. But again, some of these icons play better than their stats indicate. For me, probably Lin uh, Lineker, then Blanc, then Sol Campbell in terms of uh, in terms of rating. Mid-icon pack, the the, the, the the ballsier among us is probably going to go for the mid-icon pack. I'm going to swerve it just because it requires 18 and I like to know what I'm going to get. I'd much rather... Um, do like hero and then know that I could get a Raul, you know, for a hero and a Raul, I could get, I would still even have two icon swap tokens left over before submitting in the icon pack. So, uh, I genuinely like to swerve the icon pack cause there's just such a chance, uh, chance attached to it. Now we move on to the 19s. There's a lone 20 and then a 21. I'm, I'm just going to call the elephant in the room. I think the fact that we got an 89 Ronaldinho and we have to separate the favorite player in real life from the player in game. 75 stamina, 80 sprint speed, 81 acceleration, pretty much the only weaknesses, right? But there's just something about the card. It's I would have preferred the um the 91 over this. For for how many it costs, you have to get 21 swap tokens for an 89 Ronaldinho. And I know it's Ronaldinho. I know he's four star, five star, but I, at the stage of the game where you're going to be able to unlock him, which would be, I don't know, like a month, month and a half, maybe even two months from now, he just doesn't have the sprint speed that I like. Again, I know the chem style could change that. Dribbling stats, even like 84 bounce and 85 agility on a Ronaldinho, like that just kind of freaks me out. For how many it requires, I, I'm, I'm swerving that. And I think unpopular opinion or maybe, maybe a hot take, he's the biggest swerve. Um, out of any of the icon swaps, given what you have to do to get him. So uh, we're going to go over to the 19s. John Barnes is a guy that looks absolutely incredible. Okay. Four star, four star, English, right? 88 acceleration, 91 sprint speed, 87 attacking positioning, 88 finishing, really good distance shooting, really nice passing stats. He looks like he could turn into one of the better cams in the game. Nice dribbling stats as well. Three dribbling stats that are in a 90 plus. Um, could, looks like he could honestly play anywhere on the pitch. Looks like, like he can play left wing, right wing, striker, uh, cam, um, 88 stamina, 86 strength. John Barnes, man, is probably one of my favorite ones and is really giving, is really confusing me whether or not I do either one of Coleman and Raul or Coleman and Nakata. So those are my two sets over there. 
And then Alessandro Del Piero is the other guy that I'm looking at. I'm really, really strongly leaning towards doing Alessandro Del Piero. You guys know I've been looking for a guy to get uh, like a Politano link and then getting my uh, Serie A so uh, sides uh, sorted on the, on the RTG. Five-star weak foot, four-star skill moves. 93 finishing, 90 composure, 85 stamina. Nuts dribbling stats. I know for the same reason that I knocked Socrates about the balance. Um, I feel like the rest of his elite level stats kind of rise that up and make me not too concerned about the 73, 73 balance. So really, really nice passing stats. I'd probably do something to jack off the dribbling and passing. 85 sprint speed, 86 acceleration. So not elite level, but definitely, definitely usable 100%, especially at like a cam or like a CM position. And then, like I said, nice distance shooting. Attacking positioning is elite. Finishing is elite. Composure is elite. Really nice passing stats with free kick accuracy and vision and all that. Um, so Del Piero is one guy I'm definitely considering. And it, it can't be understated. He's one less He's one less than Ronaldinho. So uh, Barnes and uh, Alessandro Del Piero are two guys that I'm looking at there. And then Luis El Matador Hernandez. Again, I, I can't... If I'm gonna if I'm gonna grind that many icon swaps, I want someone that has I want like four star five star guys if that makes sense. And all the other guys that we've talked about so far have pretty much four star four star. El Matador, he's got a he's got a place in my heart. I know Castro would be very upset if you heard me saying this right now, but I think I'll probably swerve him. 94 acceleration, 91 sprint speed. That's elite level. Finishing's elite. Composure's really good. Dribbling stats for that purpose are all really, really, really good. And then heading accuracy and jumping again. If if the, if a patch ever comes out that gets heading to work, uh, he turns into a monster. And then 82 stamina. There's no problem there. So. Um, Again, uh, I know there's a lot of Mexican supporters out there that are going to probably go for this uh, El Matador, but uh, for me, I, I I probably go, I probably rank it ADP, 1A, John Barnes, 1B, and then Luis Hernandez, B. So, uh, well, that's not really fair because both are 19 and then Alessandro Del Piero is in his league of his own. So, I'll say John Barnes, 1A, Luis Hernandez, 1B, and then Alessandro, Alessandro Del Piero, definitely a guy that I'm considering going for um on the on this side of it as opposed to the cheap you know 10 and 6 uh 6 uh token swap ones now patrick vieira i can't justify it dude i can't justify grinding out 23 foot swap tokens when there's going to be a total of 24 going for this card i mean like for those of for those of you that did sissoko there'd be no reason to do this um again if you really do enjoy the grind of foot swaps i i mean i can't hate you for doing it but i i just i i couldn't bring myself to do this card um, given that he is, uh, given that he requires 24, and then given that Michael Ezian, who in my opinion is the best one, a 90 freaking Ezian is minus one than Viera. So if you're going to do Viera, I say don't do Viera and go ahead and do this Ezian. Uh, just looks absolutely insane. 94 stamina, 89 strength, defensive awareness, 90. So many stats that are in the 90. Very, very nice looking card. 87 acceleration, 84 sprint speed. And now I'm wondering myself, do I want to do that card? But I just don't know if I have it in me to do the 23, if I'm being honest with you. Damn, dude. I'm kind of thinking Raul and Nakata now. I, guys, you have to understand, I've changed my mind maybe 100 times since Icon Swaps 2 came out yesterday. I've had 24 hours to think about this pretty much, and I'm still just completely, completely lost. But I've narrowed it down to a couple of guys. I don't think I'm going to do any of the guys on the first page. Hero would probably be one of the guys that I definitely strongly consider doing alongside Bobby Moore. But Fernando Hero is definitely a first page guy. Just to recap, Raul and Ronald Koeman are two guys I'm looking at 10. Um, Hidetoshi Nakata is the only guy that I'm considering on this side. Again, if I didn't have Mbabu, I'd strongly consider Zambrota. So, uh, Nakata, Komen, or Nakata, Raul for 21 seems very, very attractive for me. I'm probably swerving every one of these guys. Uh, and then we get to this page right here, and this is where I'm having my issues. John Barnes is a guy that I'm really starting to warm up to. ADP is the guy on the other side. So, it's either Nakata, um, Nakata, and then Raul plus Komen. Or I just completely go out and try to get this uh, Alessandro Del Piero done uh, for 20 or possibly John Barnes or go for that Michael Ezian. So those are my prob those are those are my options right there. Those are going to be my thoughts for Icon Swaps 2. Again, this is probably going to be one of the longer videos that you see, but um, just j just gives a little bit of my perspective on what I'm considering when I'm doing these Icon Swaps. Again, someone might have a totally different perspective if you're running a full French side or something or the other. Again, if you have club allegiances, obviously that might sway your opinion on Icon Swaps 2. But that's going to do it for the episode, you guys. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Again, a little bit a little bit of a longer episode, but again, hopefully you guys did enjoy sort of like a podcasty type thing. Um, and uh, if you guys did enjoy, drop a like on the video. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below. Let me know who you guys are considering about Icon Swaps 2, what combos you're looking at, and whether or not uh, you actually like the Icon Swaps 2 prom uh, promo. That might have been a better question to start off with, but hopefully you guys have enjoyed. I will catch you guys for another upload tomorrow. Till next time, my bros. Tschüss. Later. Ade.